Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be taking a look at two separate games where the China is up against the English and basically going to analyse like what went different in both of the games. One ultimately led to China winning and the other China lost. Both coming up against feudal pressure but they both kind of handled it a bit differently to each other and I wanted to break down what went well for one and what didn't go well for the other and hopefully this can help your own gameplay when you are playing China and you are coming up against any feudal age pressure. Hopefully you find this helpful. If you do, don't forget to like and subscribe so you can see my future guides, my past guides, and also any further analysis as analysis. If you haven't already, feel free to check out my China build order guide, which is very similar to what you're gonna see in these videos. So you can check that out on my previous video and let's dive right in. All right, so we are going to be taking a look at the game between Beastie Cutie and Marine Lord, mainly focusing on Beastie Cutie's side of things because we want to take a look into his China build order, as well as how he approaches the handling the early pressure of the English player here. So let's jump right into it straight away, building a mill as expected and queuing his Imperial official. Now the superior official is going to go straight to the mill here and he's going to supervise it so he gets an extra 20% from the resources collected. I think this is a little bit of a mistake here. He wants to be all on the sheep here as they're going to gather a little bit quicker. Okay, he's transitioned over now. Um, let's go to reveal all the map here and we'll just take a look at his initial opening with his build order. Hmm. So he's sending a new build to food. Then I expect him to move his villages across the wood here. Uh, with this game, we kind of want to see... I know it's a little bit of a spoiler, but, we, but Beastie Cutie does end up winning this game against the English. In comparison to the other game I'll be casting, which is the Hera match. Hera versus uh, 3DB. Same matchup, whereas the China lost that game. So... There was slight different approaches from the English, but overall it was still the same early colonial pressure, uh, sorry, early feudal pressure. Um, and we kind of wanted to take a look and see what the differences were in approaches and why one uh, China was able to win the same matchup compared to the other. So Newville's over to a lumber, build a house before the lumber so we didn't get pop capped. And he is going three on wood and then another Imperial official to supervise the lumber camp. Now, my guess is he's going to collect tax soon. There it goes. Collecting tax. So he's going to be collecting tax all the way up to age two without gathering any gold. So he's just relying on that gold income from the Imperial officials to get up, which allows him to chop a lot more wood, not waste time in the early game to get gold. So he can have a nice wood reserve banked up for when he ages. It also allows more tax collection from the lumber camp. If it was from the gold, you would have to split the collection from two different points here, which is going to delay the age up further. Um, okay. So bringing back sheep, probably going to drop it off the mill here. Changes his directions, dropping off at the mill. But he's got one Imperial officer collecting tax. Now, I don't know whether the trade-off here for making this huge walking distance to collect from both with one Imperial official is more efficient. I believe that just having the having him collect tax from the wood and then the the officer um, the officer that is supervising the mill here can do its own one and then come back. It just reduces the walk time of the Imperial official. You will lose out on like maybe four gold, uh, four food here, but you're saving more time by just doing it that way. Hmm. So he's just put seven on food, all his new bills to wood until he ages up here. Now, generally speaking, if you are playing this matchup yourself, likely to expect some early pressure coming out from the English player. Um, it's what they're well known to, for doing, and if they don't, I feel like they're putting them at, at themselves at quite a disadvantage. 
considering that professional scouts isn't really that common with them. So we're looking to age up now with the Barbican of the Sun, protecting his wood line. Um, he's reasonably protected from the TC here, as there's like a bit of a choke point on this map. So he's he's opting to build the Barbican of the Sun here. Plus, this is really easy to wall off here. So nice placement here. Kind of, if he walls here, and the only way the opponent can really come up come through is here. Um, kind of forcing him to run into the Barbican of the Sun here. Yep, so walling up the top side, walling up the bottom side. Now we're not going to watch this whole game because as you can see it goes for over an hour. But hmm, we want to look at the opening and see the approach here in uh, what he does and how he's able to overcome the English early pressure. So now really the only entrance points are... Hmm, right here and down the bottom here but in order for the English to do it they have to obviously walk a long way to come around here so he's opting not to fully wall this off but rather make his opponent walk through these chokes here where the Barbican of the Sun can actually shoot them now this is something I see a lot of players do um, they force their opponent to walk through a certain area rather than actually walling off the whole map a great way to force a fight in a certain position. So he's put up, he's put six uh, vills over to gold here because he has built a stable, training scouts, and he will be taking in professional scouts any second now. There we go. Now he's used a combination of collecting tax as well as gathering gold here to get professional scouts in, and he's just continuing to train scouts. Supervising the stable so they train faster. So he's still got 9 in wood, 10 on food. Which, this is considered to be quite a high number. Um, he's obviously scouted... Has he scouted this? I wasn't actually paying attention if he scouted that. But, scouts are going out now to collect deer. So no doubt that they'll actually... He might see something here. Not seeing anything yet, not training any military, and now he's training horsemen. I mean, it's kind of a given that you're going to expect longbows to be coming out. I wonder, okay, so right here, you can see he's scouted that his opponent has built an arsenal before he's built a, a barracks. So this then, like, gives the beastie cutie enough information to go, okay, I'm going to go all in horsemen, because he's not going to have pikemen for these initial stages of it. So it's likely that um, Marine Lord is doing one of two things. He's opting to take Siege Engineering, which he does in this case, or he's just going for attack upgrades. The so Beastie Cuties opted to go for an Arsenal and two Stables, going all out on Horseman here. Ram coming in, and he's instantly teched Range Defense, which is going to be a huge uh, benefit for him when he's fighting with Horseman against Archers. So completing this wall to build a, uh, to kind of give himself a bit of time now that he's seen rams. And now that he, he's supervising uh, his stable, he can pump out um, horsemen very quickly here. And as you can see, he's kind of macroed very heavily on food, so he can constantly produce these uh, horsemen coming through. Keeping his cool, not forcing any fights. There's no real reason for him to push out at this stage until he has a better mass. So he's just being patient here, not not jumping the gun with trying to fight the English army. So because because um he can't really afford the production of two stables plus never mind, he is supervising one of the stables. I guess he has really good food eco from supervising this mill, as well as gathering deers, which is fastest so source of food. So now he's uh, supervising the arsenal to get his techs in quicker, probably looking to engage in a fight soon as the ram is coming into his base. Now, if Beastie had scouted a barracks, I'm sure he would have gone for an archery range instead of a horse, uh, double horseman here. 
which is something that you really need to be on top of when you're playing. Um, if you're scouting your opponent constantly, you're going to know what he's making, and then you can make the appropriate units. So he's gone for range defense, mass horsemen, and he's looking to clean up here. Um, he's got enough horsemen to deal with these longbowmen. There's only one spear out right now. Um, and he is most likely going to clean up most of these longbows here. So really good use of scouting and getting early techs to have the advantage in this fight. So now that the, the, few, um, the few spearmen that are trickling in, he'll be able to deal with them quite easily. He's just got too many horsemen to, for um, the few spearmen that Marine Lord has. So the first wave of pressure from the English pushed back very nicely from Beastie. He's going to get this ram as well. Um, still having four horsemen alive and all of his scouts. I'm guessing now that he's kind of seen, yeah, now that he's seen the pikes being produced, he's dropping down an archery range to deal with that. So using he, the info that he has very smartly here, not doing anything without the, the information that he needs. Um, so he can respond perfectly to what his opponent is doing. So having stronger horsemen, um, let's see if Marine Lord has techs. So he has no techs other than siege engineering. So Beastie not only had the counter unit, but he also had the technology advantage, both attack and defense. Very, very well played from him so far. So now he's... Focusing his production on mostly archers, prioritizing that first because he already has a horseman mass out. Continuing to be active with his scouts in bringing more food back to his base. Pressuring the forward spot of um, Marine Lord here. Not noticing this pike jabbing away at his horseman, but. It's all good. So now he's looking to macro to age up. So he's cleaned that first wave of army. Um, let's see how soon he decides to age up, whether he keeps massing for a longer period of time. But this is what I was talking about in my other build order guide is once you feel like you're not under a huge amount of pressure, like you've evened out the, the military here, um, you can look at macroing to age up. So he's swapped a lot of a lot more bills to gold to get to the next stage here. Ram being annoying at the top side, but Beastie's just cleaning up his uh, forward base with the barracks. So meanwhile, Beastie also knows that he's not able to produce pikes from here without being cleaned up. So Marine Lord has to invest in another barracks at home here. Okay, so BC knows that China is knocking at his door again. He's going to continue to produce a few more units just so he feels safe when he gets the chance to age up. He's got the army to back up his villages to siege down these rams, so he can afford to just go forward and siege these. The horsemen should pack, uh, push back the archers so his villages don't get hit, and the archers can come down and now help clean up the army of uh, Marine Lord here. Obviously, Marine Lord's invested a lot into these rams, which means it's not being spent on units, and now Beastie is able to kind of punish that. Still producing units. Um, <clears throat> to make sure he's in a solid position here. Nonetheless, he's got the gold banked up, ready to age when he needs to. So, second round of the English push has been repelled quite convincingly as well. Convincingly as well. Um, having the military advantage right now. Five horsemen at home with an extra three archers on top of the ten archers here. So actually he has all of his uh, arsenal upgrades right now. Whereas, interestingly, um, Marine Lord's gone for the attack and defense of um, melee. 
I'd imagine Beastie is gonna start considering AG up now. He's kind of repelled the damage. He's still making a few more units though, which is interesting, but um He knows his opponent isn't on multiple TCs as well, so he's not feeling pressured to kind of focus on his eco here. He knows if he can get into the late stages of the game, China will have the advantage just because of how insanely good their siege is. Still producing, but has the gold in the bank, kind of take a majority of the vills off of gold as well. I'm sure Marine Lord thinks, okay, Beastie's probably going to be aging at this stage, so he's keep he keeps on coming back. So he's not expecting Beastie to keep messing up. Now, Beastie's got a solid mass here, still producing a Lossman, so longer than I expected, but let's see how it pans out. Seeing if he can get any snipes with the Longwares here. He's only going to be able to shoot the Lumber here, no Vils over there. Uh, Beastie migrated all his bills back here because he knew that this was the point that um, Marine, Lord, Marine Lord was pushing. <clears throat> so running out of berries here, still has plenty of hunts though, but opting to send half of his food bills across to the berries over there. He's uh, looking at walling here as well. One, one sneaky longbow checking it out. Uh, let's fast forward a little bit here. So picking off one bill from Marine Lord. Looking at securing more wood with pushing out with his army here. I'm sure he's pretty confident he's got a good military lead at the moment because he's been producing non-stop from three production buildings. Opting to fight this. Looks like he will clean this up. He does have the military advantage. Pushing Marine Lord off his wood line as well, which is really nice to be doing against the English, especially as the Chinese. Um, Beastie at 1k food now, so looking to age up. As you can see, Marine Lord's not even close to aging. He's spending everything he has um, producing units right now, especially considering he got caught off guard with the mass that Beastie had. So he's aging up with six fills, going with the clock tower here. Um, this is going to produce like insane um, upgraded siege units. They have 50% more HP, which makes them pretty crazy in siege wars. So from here, BC um, is going to be looking at using his upgraded unit advantage. He might even upgrade the archers and horsemen because he has quite a solid mass of them. Um, a little bit many on wood, but I guess he's building farms to... Yeah, so he's just dropping down all the farms with his resources, just preparing for transition. He still has lots of deers here, but you don't want to be at the stage of where you completely run out of deers and you have no other food to get. So, upgrading his archers now. Already up... Has he already upgraded his horsemen? Hasn't upgraded his horsemen yet. We'll see if he opts to. I mean, he doesn't have an insane amount of horsemen yet, and he... Doesn't necessarily need to train anyone now that he's can create lances. Marine Lord catching up, but he is also going to be behind in techs here. Um, Beastie actually already getting an extra range defense here and now upgrading range attack. So now he's looking to kind of harass the English. Built a ram. Now. One thing when you kind of compare this game to the Hera game is that he does really well at scouting his opponent and making the appropriate units to kind of counter what he's doing. Um, he also gets the early arsenal text, which is something that didn't happen from 3DB when he was up against the English. 3DB didn't actually get the text until age 3, which is very delayed considering you're up against the English. Um, who have like the longbows, the plus one armor against longbows is really important. 
So Beastie floating quite a lot of food right now, opting to go for the Dynasty now. So now that he gets this Dynasty, he'll be able to train Vils at a faster rate. So he's not actually going super greedy with an extra TC here. He's just looking to somewhat match the economy of the English because as the English, they get to age up with a second TC. Um, so he doesn't want to get punished too hard. So he's opting to go for the um, Dynasty rather than an extra TC here. Uh, this is quite different to what we saw um, 3DP do. He went for the Dynasty and an extra TC. Um, and as a consequence, he got punished really hard. He just got overwhelmed with the units. Um, he didn't he didn't take particularly favorable trades, whereas BC was on top of it. He had all his arsenal techs, the perfect um, kind of unit combination when it came to age two. So he's in a quite a comfortable position right now. 70 vils, I'd imagine would be pretty similar for Marine Lord. 66 for Marine Lord. So at this stage, what he wants to be considering is, okay, all I need to do right now is not to fall too far behind on eco and drag this out to the late game. Um, China Siege is just like, especially Bombards is so hard to stop. So we'll fast forward a little bit here. Um, we've kind of touched on all the points of what made him win this game, or at least the early game. So he's defended really well here, transitioned to Castle Age before the English has, um, and had, had, has had the tech advantage for majority of the game here. Now it's just looking to punish the English for having an open base, running in with some Lancers to kind of keep his Vill count in a competitive level. Also idling English is really powerful. Beastie looking to go to Imperial now. <clears throat> So now going up to Imperial. So this is kind of touched, like we've touched on all the points that I wanted to touch on. His build order, how he's managed to hold the, the aggression of the English. And from here, he eventually grinds down the English um, in Imperial, just because that's where China thrives. Uh, English does come and attack and does a little bit of damage, but nothing that Beastie couldn't hold just because he's had the advantage the whole game in terms of military. Um, dropping down a keep as well for extra defense here and then <clears throat> for the next 40 minutes it's just back and forward and then China eventually winning with his bombards um, that kind of covers it Th I think that is like there's those few points in which um, allowed BC to get the advantage over Marine Lord compared to what 3DB did all right, so this game is between Hera and 3DB, and we are going to be checking out mostly from 3DB's point of view to see what he's done in this game and potentially what he could have done better. But most importantly, we're going to kind of be comparing the differences between 3DB's China gameplay and Beastie Cutie's China gameplay to kind of see where we can kind of improve our own gameplay to better deal with the aggression uh, that English or any other Civ that decides to play Age 2 puts out. So let's get into it. Swap our view over here to 3DB. Okay, so opening straight to the mill as well. He's actually making a scout first, which is interesting. Um, I wouldn't say this is necessarily better or worse. It might come down to personal preference. Uh, what this extra scout is going to allow you to do is collect more sheep. Which is quite important for China, um, especially if they don't go professional scouts. I do believe 3DB did go professional scouts here, um, but he will be getting a lot of sheep, which is one good for China as they'll have a longer, longer like uh, what do you call it, natural uh, food source, and he's also denying the English sheep, which is really important for English. So he sent his first scout straight across to Hera's side of the map to collect sheep, which is quite smart. Um, he is now building an Imperial of Imperial Officer? Official? Officer? Official. <laughs> Sorry, getting mixed up with my words here. Um, so he built an extra bill first and then went an Imperial Official. Um, collecting some tax and then straight to supervising. Honestly, I think I like skipping the scout 
first so you can get supervising on the meal straight away but it again it just comes down to personal preference here so same as uh kind of build order we ran through in the previous video it's seven on food and then all bills coming across to wood here see he's picked up a fair bit of sheep with his first scout coming across to Harris side second scout not picking up too many but he has good uh, vision on the whole map so far I do believe 3db does also go professional scouts um, so it's not like it, it does have extra value having a scout here but keep in mind he's sacrificing a villager being trained from the TC in order to create that scout so I'd imagine that's going to slow his age up a little bit here. So he's going with five vills on wood before he makes an Imperial official. Um, this is quite different to Beastie's uh, opening. But yeah, I, I don't think it's it creates a huge difference overall. Maybe he's also trying to make up for the lost villagers he had in the early stage of the game. So he wants to have more villagers out before supervising the wood. So he can get up a little bit quicker. I'm just going to fast forward a little bit here. Collecting taxes with this Imperial official. And this is what I'm talking about in my previous video. And I'll also cover in... Um, the the game with BC Cutie. Uh, 3DB is collecting tax from the lumber camp, bringing it back to the town center and going straight back on the lumber camp rather than having one walking all the way from the lumber to the mill and back. So I believe this is a more efficient way of doing it. It is going to require a little bit more micromanagement. But now 3DB is looking to click up soon see where he decides to put his Barbican of the Sun here. Originally going to put it out the front, but decides to protect his gold mine here. Um, interesting choice. I guess he has the capability of walling off here, so he wanted to keep the backside a bit safer. Um, understandable, but so he's taken all of his vills off wood, put them onto gold so he can get professional scouts as soon as possible once he gets up. He's up around 5 minutes with 4 vills on the barbican. So a bit delayed because of the opening he did with the scout. Building a stable now. Now once he's kind of got the stable down, he's transitioning a lot of his vills off, uh, all of his vills off gold onto food and wood. Um, so he obviously knows or suspects that the English, yeah, he scouted the English is coming across with longbow. So he wants to supervise the stable and make as many horses, horsemen as he can. He's also, um, delayed his scout production for the initial stages here. Just because he wants to be able to get more horsemen out. Let's see. He has professional scouts, but he's not taking any yet. Looks like he's opting to go for Harris Hunt first before he kind of has a, a longbow mass, which he can't deal with. So distracting the longbows while he picks up the deer. Pretty good play. A little bit of an overcommit here, like he didn't need to stay for that long. Losing two horsemen for nearly free, but... Nonetheless, adding an archery range in... He's, he's spotted the barracks, so he's responding with the archery range. Um, oh, it looks like he's a bit delayed with this wall. So one thing that you want to make sure you're doing is walling off any chokes earlier than what 3db has done here. Just to avoid any longbows coming into your base and start like gunning down your wood line or whatever it may be. Gonna lose his imperial official. Not ideal. That is 150 food. They take 20 seconds to train as well, so you're also losing a villager when you're training that Imperial official. So, no blacksmith coming out for 3db yet. Fighting with a lot smaller of an army. He's just trying to hold his woodline position here. 
but he's going to struggle to get any more archers out. Yeah, this is a really bad fight right here. He doesn't really have a great option for like a secondary wood line because the longbow, now that they're in, they can target down this wood line and also the wood line up there. So he's chopping over this side to kind of not take any longbow fire yet. But he is bleeding units, right? He's never been able to like get a mass together and attack all at once. He, he's had to keep on going with smaller, smaller mass than the English. Which obviously leads to less desirable trades here. Speed it up a little bit. Again, he's, he, I feel like this isn't very good for him right now. I mean, if he doesn't do this, there is a chance that the longbows just keep pushing his wood line, which at the moment he's trying to keep safe. But he does have his supervised, so he's able to keep pumping out horsemen, bringing in the scouts to tank up some damage. Um, and now getting up the wall. So a lot of this would have been like prevented altogether if he decided to wall this choke earlier uh, to stop any longbows coming through. So if you are on a map with chokes like this, I highly recommend this against anyone that's putting on early pressure, especially English because they have the longbows that can snipe your vills a lot easier. Hera look, looking around for a kill, but he's not gonna be able to walk to this wood line now unless he runs into the TC. So, still no blacksmith, uh, which is kind of crucial when you're coming up against English, right? I guess he's been struggling with wood, so maybe that's a reason why he doesn't have the blacksmith yet. But, yeah, I guess that's also a consequence of not, like, taking all of his vills off wood to walk all the way over to the gold, um, to get his professional scouts. Losing a few more bills here, but he should be able to take a reasonably good fight here, I, I believe. Um, although his archer numbers are dwindling, there is a few pikes here, but it looks like he's going to clean this up. Actually went a lot better than it kind of looked like it was going to go. So now, uh, let's see what 3DB decides to do. So he's continuing to build horsemen, expecting English to come back. In again with potentially rams. So he's moving out onto the map. I guess now that Hera's kind of backed off completely, he expects him to be aging up. Which I believe at this stage is what Hera is planning on doing. Don't see the landmark yet, but B looking to get some work done here. Really with horsemen, you're not gonna be able to get much done. Just because of the Gatling gun town center. Um, that the English have, and also the network of castles that the longbows will have in the base. So he's actually going for the Song Dynasty now. Now that Hera's kind of backed off with the pressure, feels safe enough to kind of build the Song Dynasty, get a bit of an eco rolling to potentially overtake. Or at least somewhat match now that um, Hera's aged up with the town center. So, let's check what he's doing back at home. Looks like he's planning on going up now, his macro suggests so. So, now he's aging up. Now, this is a trend we kind of see across both the China players in this matchup. Is that they wait till the moment that they're safe enough to age up. So, in this case, he knows that Hero's aged up before him. Um, so, he can follow suit. Whereas in the BC game, he does a really good job of holding his opponent and actually cleaning up the English army multiple times and getting up to Castle Age before him. So he's aged up. He's actually collecting stone now, which suggests he might be going for a second TC. Um, he's not actually like gathering enough to suggest he's going for a keep. Now, Hera knocking at the front door. He's come back through the gate here, losing a fair bit of his army. Uh, but he's got his nest of beasts kind of turtle behind these walls, and Hera's going to have to back off here. Just a little bit of harass with the horseman there. 
Loading a lot of resources right now. Um, not sure what he plans on doing with the resources. He's not making any military right now. Can't play here, healing up his nest to be that had taken some longbow damage with his fills. More on stone. So, at this stage, he still does not have a blacksmith. So, we're at 19 minutes in the game with zero military upgrades. Um, fighting against Hera, who has double ranged attack and one range resist. So that's a big thing here that is like really different uh, com when you compare both games is that 3db he has opted to not like go blacksmith at all for a long time whereas um, Beastie Cutie actually prioritized that in early age too before he ever took a fight um, and and that you can kind of see the difference in the in early in the initial fights of the each of these games that beastie managed to clean up convincingly like not taking much damage from the longbows whereas uh 3db is taking a lot more um the plus one armor makes a big difference in the feudal age so actually opting to go for a second tc now this is extremely greedy he obviously knows that his opponent's on two cc just slightly better than the song dynasty single tc uh, but the thing with China is, as long as you can kind of survive to the late game, you have a good chance of winning. Um, and he's basically foregoing, uh, like, he, he's sacrificing, like, a bunch of military in order to kind of boom even harder. And he's kind of, at the moment, stuck in his base, so if he, does, if he never gets the mass up in time, he's just gonna never be able to get out and collect gold. Uh, Longbow's actually getting a really good raid here. Um, losing a lot of ills right there, so another big mistake. Obviously, he's a really good player, and it happens to all of us that we kind of don't see certain things going on the map. I feel like the flares sometimes are not obvious enough that you are being attacked in a certain location. Uh, but nonetheless, he's just turtling, trying to survive, making a bunch of spring olds, um, which is where the majority of his money's going towards. Doesn't really have much to do with cavalry right now. Like, Hera has, what, 10 knights? And 3db just has a few archers with some spring olds and some clock towers. So he is dropping a barracks, but he's been at like 1,000 food for like a long time in this game. Um, which is something that you don't want to be doing. You want to be spending all your resources as they're coming in. Especially when you're booming this hard. Um, not having the military to protect that boom is, is very dangerous. You actually see Hera coming around trying for a sneaky raid. This is dangerous, like, Hera could literally just die this and, like, clean up this whole army. So, first nest to be going down, second nest to be going down, just trying to outheal it, it's just not gonna happen. Here's a few men at arms which aren't even good against cavalry, so there's, li there's nothing here to stop these knights from running a rampage here. Hera had a few crossbows in the mix before, but lost those. Um, cleaning up the majority of his archers here, Hera decides to back out, but has nine more knights on the way. The 3db also not transitioning across the farms quick enough. Um, one thing we did see in Beastie's game, he was dropping down farms before he even ran out of hunts with the professional scout, which means he never had this lull in food, like he always had consistent food coming in. So another big thing to make sure you're not doing when you're playing as China. Obviously he's booming really hard, he's making mana arms, like all of this is heavy in food. And Pro Scouts is not going to fund that forever, so you need to make sure you're on top of this. Yeah, he's just losing everything now. Booming too hard, not transitioning with his farms. Losing a bunch of bills and taps out. So I think, like, when you compare, like, watch these games back to back, you can see the key differences which kind of led to 3db's, um, loss here, uh, compared to Beastie actually winning that matchup. Um, the main things were, I think, was, like, obviously not walling the choke early enough, Beastie had that down patch straight away, um, not getting arsenal techs until too late in the game, I actually didn't even check if he got them at all, but by the like the 19 minute mark he didn't even have a blacksmith 
um, and then not transitioning to farms early enough. Another thing as well is he got punished for his greed, right? He went Song Dynasty double TC quite late in the game and he wasn't able to fund the villager production along with the military production. He was relying too heavily on the siege to carry him through it, but as soon as the knights broke through, he had nothing to do with that. And that just ultimately led to the loss of Greedy V in that game. Obviously, the English players had slightly different approaches, but ultimately, it was came down to those few points, which was the difference between BC and 3DB, in my opinion. Don't get me wrong, both these players are really, really good. Like, uh, both of them are, like, top-notch players. So, um, it's easier to kind of analyze this from a third-person view and while you're not playing the game. But I thought I'd kind of break these down to give you some insights into maybe how you could um, adapt on when you when you are coming up against age two pressure so hopefully this was helpful if you did find this useful uh please like and subscribe um to get notified of next guides and uh and that and that man i can never pronounce this word analysis and when, um, when i analyze games that's what i'm looking for uh, i'll see you in the next video guys thanks for watching